Hello everybody and welcome to another video. It's great to have you with me again. My name is Peter Rising, I'm a Microsoft MVP and I want to talk to you today all about creating custom roles within Microsoft 365 Defender. These are very powerful abilities to give you more granular control uh, for roles that you are going to give to various administrators within Microsoft 365. But before we get to that, some housekeeping for you. Please do hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Subscribing does a number of things. It helps me to reach a wider audience. It helps you to never miss a video as well. It does so much more than you know, and it's completely free to do so. It costs you nothing. It helps me so much to grow the channel and reach a wider audience. So please do hit that button if you've not already done so. Please also hit that notifications bell, ring that bell so you never miss a video uh, when I publish one to the channel. You can also become a member if you like my channel and want to see more member exclusive content like member videos. There are many perks that you can take advantage of by becoming a member and helping to support the channel to grow more as well. So uh, click the join button to find out more. There are three levels of memberships available. A big thank you to all of my wonderful members who have already joined. You are absolutely fantastic. Uh, so uh, that's the housekeeping out of the way. So let's get to the video. Today's subject, Microsoft 365 Defender, creating custom roles. It's coming right up. So if you've been using Microsoft 365 Defender permissions and you're finding that the permissions you're granting to your users are not quite doing what they need them to do, then new permissions within security.microsoft.com are going to give you more granularity that you need. So let's take a look at what this is all about. So in the Microsoft 365 Defender Security Center at security.microsoft.com, we can navigate down to permissions and we can see lots of different types of uh, role uh, areas here. The one we want to be looking at is Microsoft 365 Defender roles. We can look at Azure AD as well, or more properly Microsoft Entra now. We can look at endpoint roles and groups as well, and cloud apps. But for this video, we're going to focus on Microsoft 365 Defender roles. And at the top here, we get some information about that, that we can try the Microsoft 365 Defender permission model and get that more granular control. And right from here, we can go in there and create a custom role. But we'll we'll go in the proper way. We'll click on roles and see what it's all about. My session is expired so let's quickly just refresh that and log back in and there we go fantastic so permissions and roles within microsoft 365 defender let's just close off that side panel get a full screen which you know i love and what have we got here it's telling us we can uh get started with roles in Microsoft 365 Defender. Roles give users permission to view data and complete tasks in Microsoft 365 Defender. Help keep your organization secure by assigning the least permissive role to users. So important, I'm always talking about this. Give only what is needed and if you can on a just-in-time basis using a privileged information management PIM. Okay, so what can we do here? We can get that more granular control for granting users access to view and manage data with the new permissions model. Uh, there's two things we can do here. We can import legacy roles if we want to, uh, and we can create your first role. So let's first have a look at creating your first role. Uh, you can click on that. And this does exactly the same thing as if you click on create custom role, it opens the same wizard. So um, what we can do here is we can set up the basics first, fill out some basic information about the role you'd like to create. Gives you an example here, security analyst, for example. Let's use that provided example. Let's do exactly that and set up a security analyst. Uh, and let's just label it custom. You could uh, give yourself a naming convention. You could put custom at the start or at the at the end or prefix suffix type way. Always put in a description. I'm not gonna do so here, just out of pure laziness, but let's click on next. And let's choose our permissions. What have we got? 
we can select the permissions from each particular permissions group here to customize this role. And there are three categories here. There are security operations, uh, security posture and authorization and settings. And you can see we get a description here on what these do. The operations manages day-to-day -day operations in response to incidents and advisories. The posture manages the organization's security posture, performs defender vulnerability management, and the authorization and settings manages the security and system settings, creates and assigns roles. So we can go into each of these and we get some choices here. We can select the permissions in this group to use users who perform security operations in this case and who respond to incidents and advisories. So what can we grant? We can select all read-only permissions and apply that straight away. We can select all read and manage permissions so you can see the level of granularity that we can put in place. If that's not good enough for us, if that doesn't go far enough, we can go into select custom permissions and under security data, again, we have the choice to select read only, we can select all permissions, or we can go into custom permissions. So here we can check the roles that we want to give to this particular uh, role group, this custom role, and we can get information on what each of these things will actually do. So we've got security data basics. This is a read role and this will allow view info about incidents, alerts, investigations, etc., etc. So that's a read role. Alerts, manage. So this, this can manage rather than just read. So this can manage alerts, start automated investigations, run scans, etc., etc. And there's lots of different choices here. So we can select the ones that we want with our custom permissions. So let's just do this read one, for example, and maybe the alerts one and as you can see as we go down we get more um capabilities as, as we go down the list so as we go down that one gets grayed out because it's overridden by the fact that you're giving some managed roles as well so um if you see what i mean so for a, for this example let's just take those others out and give it a pure read only security data basics and at the bottom there we can select raw data for email and collaboration as well. And we can select again, read only, or we can go back into those custom permissions and you'll notice it toggles them on and off depending on which way you go for, for both the um, security data and the raw data here. And here under custom permissions, you can grant email message headers read and email content read. And again, we're just gonna show you what those roles will do. So maybe as we, can select that one as well and we can apply that role so there we go we've done that for security operations uh, and we've got permission selected as now yes security posture same principles you can do exactly the same we can do custom permissions custom permissions and in here we've got read access to vulnerability management we've got manage permissions for exception handling remediation handling manage secure score read so you could select those two read roles there and add those in authorization and settings here we've got um the ability to select the permissions for users who need to configure your security and system settings and create and assign those roles. We've got a little warning here that if you select any permissions on this page, you will also assign the security data read permission under the security operations permission group. So that's a little, um, a little warning there just to prep you for the, the effects of that on other settings that you've already made. So uh, read only, etc., uh, etc. Et authorization, security. So you get the gist. So we'll we'll not select that one, and we can go ahead and we can create those permissions for the role. Now we can create an assignment. We can add an assignment to get started. We'll assign this role to users and user groups in the organization, and choose data sources that these users can access. So let's click on add assignment so we can put in the assignment name uh let's just call this for lack of any inventiveness while recording this video or early on a sunday morning i'll just call it assignment one <laughs> not very inventive but uh what have we got here uh, users in this assignment can access the following data sources now we've got some information here defender for identity experiences will also adhere to permissions granted from 
portal.cloudappsecurity.com. So that's relevant because um, for those of you who may not know, Cloud App Security, more recently known as Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, uh, is now more properly accessed within here, within the security portal, the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. Previously, uh, it was accessible at portal.cloudappsecurity.com. A very different experience, uh, night and day, what that looks like, how it feels, the experience. Just notice there's a typo in Cloud App Security there, actually. There's a missing P. <laughs> um, so you can choose all data sources. Or you can select specific data sources. And here we can get an idea of the sort of data sources that we can apply these assignments to. So um, what this is going to mean that anyone assigned uh, to these assignments uh, will be able to work in relation with these permissions to Defender for Endpoint and Defender Vulnerability Management, Defender for Office 365, Defender for Identity, uh, Microsoft Secure Score. So again, you can see how granular, how granular you can get. You can tick these, uncheck these, and select only the ones you want. You might not want them to have Defender for Identity, for example. So let's take that one out. And we can assign these to uh, users. Let's pick on, let's find a user to give this to, we'll give it to Joey Tribbiani. And we can add that in, and we've got our assignment. We can go next. We can review the settings that we've put in place, and we can submit those. So that's really nice and simple indeed. So we have got our first role in there, which is great. We've got our security analyst custom which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's changed the visual that we've got there now. We can still import roles. We can still activate workloads or import your existing roles from other uh, data sources. So let's, let's take a look at what that looks like to finish off this particular video. To start, let's go in and import roles. So um, workloads, let's uh, select the workloads that you want to import custom roles from. So it's giving us the ability to choose from email and collaboration. Let's go next. We can choose the roles to import. Um, so we're getting the choice here of three roles. We can import organization management, security administrator, e-discovery manager. So I might want these two, but I might not want e-discovery manager. So again, you can get quite granular in terms of what you want to uh, import in here. So let's submit that. And two roles have been imported. So there we go. We've now got a custom role in there that we've created. And we've got two imported roles. And we can still even import that final e-discovery one in if we want to. So this is giving us a lot of good control. Um, let's actually go back and import in that final e-discovery role. I wonder if uh, in doing so, that will take that import option off our wizard. I'm just curious to know if that's going to do that. So let's take a look. Um, no, it still still has the import there. Let's see what Activate Workloads does for us. If we click on Activate Workloads, here we can activate Unified Role-Based Access Control. And when you activate the workloads to use the new permissions model, which we're working on here, any custom roles that were created or managed previously by your organization will no longer grant access to services and data in Microsoft 365 Defender. Now, Little warning here that we're getting, and it's telling me that we can't activate workloads that haven't been turned on or deployed. Um, so to find out which services still need to be turned on, see workload settings. So uh, that makes sense, makes total sense. You you couldn't uh, do that if not um, if not uh, uh, turned on or deployed. So workloads, what have we got? So we've got endpoints and vulnerability management not active. So we'll toggle that on and activate that workload. It's uh, spinning away there and uh, trying to activate. So it's done that now. The Microsoft 365 Defender roles model has been changed. We cannot activate identity. That is grayed out. So that is likely because of what it's telling me up here that we can't activate those workloads that haven't been turned on or deployed. So we're, we're gonna have to go and turn this on in the, in the main settings of the security center for that to become active. Uh, and we've got additional data sources down here. We can enable the setting here uh, for secure score. So we can do that one that is available to us. It's only identity that we need to go back and and toggle on, which um, I'll not go and do, but um, 
in my head. I think that's um, uh, going to be doable from the general settings of uh, 365 Defender. So uh, do we have to save that? I don't think we do. No, I think we're good. Um, what else have we got in here? Let's take a final look. We've got under workload settings, we've got some general settings here, um, which kind of just takes us to the same area that we've just been in actually, just a different way of, of getting to it. So there we go. Fantastic stuff indeed. And that's taken us right to a dish. This is one of the things I don't like sometimes about some of these, uh, centers these admin centers if you like it takes you completely out of where you were and you've got to navigate back to that to that point so that's it that's all about um permissions and roles we can learn more about that so let's just uh get some of these links to include in the video but i think this is really good i think this is really powerful and um I think that um, uh, it's going to be very, very useful for administrators to be able to give that granularity with custom roles, whilst also being able to import some of those roles in as well. And of course, if you select the ones that you've done, you can edit and delete them if you need to as well. And that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think about custom roles within Microsoft 365 Defender. Is it something you've tried? What do you think? Do you see that these will be useful for your organization and give you more control and granularity and, uh, uh, and all that good stuff? I think they're really good, really powerful, a step in the right direction. Very, very good stuff indeed. Let me know in the comments. Let me know on Twitter at M365Rising or X, I should say more appropriately now. So many renames lately to take into consideration. Twitter is now X, Azure AD is now Enter ID. I still can't yes get used the cloud app security being defender for for um, cloud apps um i couldn't even remember the name and it's been a long time but there you go what can you do well that's it folks don't forget to hit the like button give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video please subscribe uh, consider becoming a member if you want to get access to more of my content and support the channel and also hit that notifications bell until next time thank you take care see you soon